Well, thank you again for inviting us to come share a little bit about the food bank and ways that you can get involved. Uh, we distributed 100 million meals and, and that means uh, that we did that with our, our partners of uh, 900 food pantries, more than 900 food pantries, feed, um, soup kitchens and other feeding programs like uh, child nutrition programs and things like that that we do in Rockford Parks um, in the, uh, over the summer. Uh, the, uh, the need was great, 25% increase over our year last year. Um, and we couldn't have done it without our volunteers. We, had, we logged in 140,000 uh, volunteer hours last year. Which was really uh, extraordinary considering the, the year that we were all experiencing. So our volunteers really, um, you know, we had a lot of our regular volunteers that paused their volunteering during um, quarantine and COVID and all of that, but a lot of others that kind of came out um, and, and decided to step up and, you know, and help out wherever they could. So it was really extraordinary. And, um, you know, as the need increases, we continue to increase the need for, you know, the number of volunteers that uh, we can use and in different ways. So it's, it's continues to grow. And so volunteer support is crucial to help us um, continue to serve the neighbors that need us the most. So the Northern Illinois Food Bank serves 13 counties, um, uh, pretty much every county around uh, Chicago and Cook County. Those are served by our sister organization, uh, Greater Chicago Food Depository. As you can see, we have a, um, a center in, uh, in Winnebago County, which is in Rockford on Research Parkway. Uh, we, we anticipate the need this year will, uh, will be 340, 4,000 neighbors in, uh, are facing hunger or food insecurity, and that's one in 12, about 100,000 children as well. And I have uh, some numbers here that I can share about Rockford. And um, in Winnebago County, we, pro we project 38,400 um, neighbors will be food insecure. That's about 13 and a half percent of the population. Uh, and 13,240 children uh, who will be food insecure. Last year, we uh, distributed 11 million meals in Winnebago County. And, and I'd like to point out that our Rockford Center, the Northwest Center, also supports the uh, counties around it. So Boone, Ogle, and Stevenson as well. So just to tell you a little bit about the food bank, if you're not familiar, um, you know, our, we have obviously a mission and, and a vision. And so we want to share that with you. And our mission really is to provide nutritious food um, to all of the neighbors that need it in, the, in our service area. We like to do that with dignity, equity, and convenience. Um, we like to do that with, uh, we have different partnerships that help us um, we have lots of innovative ways that we've been trying to, to get more food to people. And that actually started um, the Winnebago Community Market um, was very pre-COVID, you know, a couple of years ago. Um, our Rockford Center, our Northwest Center in Rockford, um, you know, now houses the Winnebago Community Market. And that is a, an opportunity for neighbors to come and actually shop and, you know, come into the building and, and get the foods that they need. Um, not simply be handed a bag of food and, and make us uh, or have us make the choices for them, but that they can come in and make the, some choice their own. So um, we'll tell you more about that, that market later a little bit in the volunteer opportunities there. But um, that really is the, the main goal of the food bank is to, to get as much food to people as possible, um, but also in a way that, um, you know, is, is, brings them dignity and equity and convenience at the same time. So our volunteers will, you know, the hundred and, you know, close to 140,000 hours of volunteers that we had last year, they help us pack all of that. And then we get it out to those um, that are on the front lines of fighting hunger. So to our pantries, our shelters, soup kitchens, 
neighborhood um, resource centers, those types of places who will then get it out to the neighbors that need it the most in their communities. Obviously, we have volunteering at four different centers, which we've um, the, on those maps that we showed you, there was you could kind of see where those centers were. We do have um, the Northwest Center in Rockford. We have a South Suburban Center in Joliet, a North Suburban Center in Park City, which is in the Lake County area. And then we have our headquarters here in Geneva, um, which is our West Suburban Center. So obviously, we've got the, the food packing and sorting opportunities here are the centers, but then we have our direct distributions. So the, um, the mobile markets that were mentioned in the video, um, those are different opportunities where we bring uh, groceries. Uh, we, we meet neighbors with groceries, you know, in different areas. So um, it could be in the parking lot at a, a local college or university. Um, it could be um, in the parking lot at a church. It just kind of depends. Um, what distribution that is, but we have um, mobile pantries and pop-up distributions and things like that um, that allow us to, to bring food to people. And so those are mainly drive-through distributions. And so we do have volunteers that assist in, um, you know, directing traffic at those, uh, putting food directly in the vehicles of the neighbors as they arrive, talking to them, asking them how many, you know, people are in their household and, and things like that. So lots of different um, ways to actually be uh, seeing the end user and, and supporting them and helping distribute food to them like in person. So um, those were um, some big initiatives that we put into place kind of right when COVID hit and those are, have obviously continued. So um, it allows us to, to find more ways to get food to people at, other than just coming you know, um, to a food pantry. So um, what else? Here is our website, solvehungertoday.org slash volunteer. We'll take you to our volunteer page on our website so that you can do that and, and take, um, take a look at our calendar and see what opportunities are there. Um, you can help us by advocating and helping us to you know, spread awareness about how hunger is a real issue. Um, one of the things that we have in place here to help our neighbors when they call is um, we do have a SNAP hotline. So when people call and are looking for assistance, um, we've got a, a, our SNAP team will um, help them with their direct needs, but they'll also try to, to find other ways to support them um, past the immediate need of what they, you know, what, if they need food right now, they'll help them in other ways. And then you also could donate um, money to the food bank. Um, as it said in the video, a dollar helps us provide about $8 worth of groceries. So we can certainly stretch your donation at the food bank, whether that's your donation of time or your donation of money. Our Northwest Center is what we wanted to highlight, obviously, because of where you're located. So um, Winnebago Community Market, lots and lots of opportunities. Um, this was an indoor market um, prior to COVID. And when COVID hit, it turned uh, strictly to drive-through uh, drive distributions. Um, and I think it's just been in the last month now, we've reopened the market um, so neighbors can come back in and shop. And so, um, we've got different opportunities for people to come get their food now. They can continue to come on the days when we have drive-through distributions. They can come in the building again, which many of them have missed because not only were they receiving their food, but they um, were receiving that, um, I guess, interaction and community that they were used to by visiting our Winnebago community market. Um, all of this takes a lot of labor. <laughs> and so this is why we need volunteers so, so desperately, um, because it's not just a, you know, it's not just November, December when people need food, they need it all year long. And so that's why the food bank is is doing what they're doing to, you know, to serve our neighbors. And so here are the opportunities currently at that uh, Winnebago Community Market, which is um, at 765 Research Parkway. Um, if you are someone that um, enjoys that interaction with, with people, then the grocery distribution opportunities on the right would be something you might want to look into. Um, three of those distributions will uh, volunteers will be required to work outside at some point. So you think about that when you're when you're signing up for shifts. Um, 
these shifts go rather quickly. So while sometimes you look at them and you think they're a little bit long, they move very quickly <laughs> um, because you're very busy. And um, a lot of people replace these with their daily workouts. So it does keep them busy, but this is when you could interact with our neighbors. Then the opportunities on the left um, are to stock the shelves and to potentially pack some other food for the market. And so those times are listed there as well. So um, when people come in and shop inside at the Winnebago Community Market, um, it's like a grocery store. So like a small grocery store that you might go to. And so the shelves are stacked with, you know, multiples of the same types of items. And so um, as people shop, those, you know, that uh, those resources are depleted. So we do need volunteers to help stock the shelves. So it's literally what it sounds like. <laughs> You're helping us restock our grocery shelves. So um, some people would provide prefer to do that uh, versus um, interact directly with our neighbors. And that's okay too, because we need volunteers to do all sorts of things. So that's um, some of those opportunities. Um, oh, I should mention the all of these opportunities here um, that involve grocery distribution and interacting with our neighbors. You do have to be at least 12 years of age. So if you were looking to bring families or neighbors or things like that, that's something to keep in mind. Um, but then any of the food packing and stocking the shelves and things like that, volunteers just need to be eight years old and older. So uh, we provide uh, uh, letters for students that are required to do hours. So if you're collecting hours for something for school, um, we certainly can provide a letter or sign up a sheet or anything like that if people ask that question. I would say for sure right now is... Um, uh, a, a peak <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's the holiday time. Um, and so that's why I want to stress that we are serving people all year long. Um, so we love that our community, you know, comes out, especially just in November, like before Thanksgiving and then into the December um, month as well. Um, so we do have a lot of people that are, are filling those slots up um, to the point where as some are reaching out right now, um, there's, you know, looking for a, a group or, or space for a group or something like that, those shifts are filled. So um, we're looking pretty good right now. Um, it's in January. And um, I would say probably um, just before the April timeframe, um, where numbers do drop off a little bit. Um, it'll pick back up in April because um, lots of students will be getting their service hours and realizing they've only got a couple months left and that kind of thing. And then summer's a little bit lower because of um, vacations and things like that. So we hope you can all join us. It would be fantastic. You know, if you can, um, even if you got a group of faculty together or a class or um, just individually, I mean, we'd love to have um, we love it when individuals um, come on out and, and uh, experience the market and then realize that, oh, this is something that I probably I could work into my schedule, you know, once a week or um, just for a couple hours coming and do your part. You know, and, and while we're so talking, I, I think it's important to mention that we um, we understand there's food insecurity among uh, college students and and young adults, and so um, some of our some of our part volunteers go ahead and 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 do their volunteer shift, and then they turn around as a as a a, a shopper mm -hmm. and come and go yeah. through the Winnebago Community Market and pick up what they need to, for themselves, and that's perfectly acceptable because we understand you know trying to make all those those finances juggle when right. you're a young adult is, is difficult. So let us help um, take at least so that you have good food to take home with you. I, I would say in general, it would be best to do um, non-perishable goods, but we do also take, uh, you know, if somebody especially during the summertime, right? If you're gardening and you have a, an excess of, oh, you know, tomato. tomato or tomatoes or whatever, <laughs> yes, we'll certainly take those. Um, so you do even take garden? Oh, yes, oh, yeah. yes. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, definitely. And if That's we cool. if we just, we have options, we could distribute it, distribute it through the food bank, but we could also um, pass it on to our, the food pantry partners that we work with so that they have, 
uh, fresh produce. Right. Yeah, and we call it a resource center. So um, because they do more than SNAP, and they will, uh, if they're if they you know discuss the situation and, and and discuss options that might be available to them, including SNAP. So, what yeah. are the other resources? Do you all well, know? Uh, women and children, the WIC program that okay. they can they can talk about that one, uh, especially if some of your students have children. Um, they can, um, they can definitely fill them in on what food pantries might be close enough to them that they could walk to or other resources such as that. Um, yeah, so they're pretty, they, um, they're familiar with Yeah, this is a, this is probably one of the, the, the biggest barriers. Uh, it, you know, transportation is one and, and second is, is Oh, somebody else needs that more than I do, and and we want to you know everyone to know that there is enough food in Northern Illinois to feed everybody who needs it, and and not only just food but nutritious and health healthy food. So that's the first I guess message that we want to get across is um, you shouldn't skip a meal, you shouldn't right. feel like um, you're hungry constantly. There is there are food options for you. 